What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, we're going to look at checkboxes, tool buttons, and toggle buttons for TTK Bootstrap, Kinter, and Python. <laughs> Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at checkboxes, tool buttons, and toggle buttons, square and round, for TTK Bootstrap. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to grab your totally free PDF version of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome. It has all the Kinter Widget attributes in one place. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll shoot that right over to you. And while you're there, think about getting membership in tkinter.com. You get access to all my Kinter courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. So check that out if you're interested. Okay, moving along in our TTK Bootstrap playlist. In this video, we want to look at checkboxes. And there are lots of different options for checkboxes with TTK Bootstrap. You have your regular checkbox that you normally have. You get a little checkbox there. You also have these tool buttons where if you click on it, it sort of unhighlights, or if you click on it again, it highlights. And you have the same thing with outlined. There you go. And we also have these round toggle buttons and square toggle buttons. So we're gonna look at all of these in this video. Very cool and uh, really easy to use. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a playlist to all the other videos in this TTK Bootstrap series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code. I'm calling it checkbuttons.py. And I've got our theme set to superhero. And I've imported TTK Bootstrap as TB. And first thing, let's just create a simple label. So let's go my underscore label. And I'm just gonna use a regular Kinter label for this. And let's just say, uh, click the checkbox or check button, whatever, hello. And, you know, just for fun, let's give this a font of Helvetica and like a size of 18. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. And I'm going to give it a pad Y of, let's bring it down 40 from the top and then 10 from the thing below it. Okay. So first things first, let's create a check button. And remember from regular Kinter, whenever we create a check button, check box, it's called a check button in Kinter, we create a variable. And I'm gonna call this var1, and I'm gonna set that equal to an int var. And an int var is a Kinter variable, right? It's an integer variable. And the reason why we want integers is because when you click a check box, we want it to be either a one or a zero. So if it's checked, it'll be a one. If it's not checked, it's a zero. That allows us to run logic very easily to say, hey, if it's one, do this. If it's not one, do something else. Right, so we'll set up an int var for that. And then I'm gonna create a checkbox. I'm just gonna call it my check, whatever. And this is gonna be a tb.check button. All right, and so let's give this a boot style of, I'll say primary. Remember, those are our colors, right? Primary, secondary, info, success, danger, all that stuff, right? So that's really all we have to do there. And let's set the text equal to uh, check me out. Aha. Uh -huh. Check button. Check. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's set the variable to that var one we just created. And then we want to give this actually let's put start to put these on separate lines because it's getting a little hard to read. So our variable is going to be var one, we want to set the on value. So what is it when it gets checked, we'll set that to one. We want to set the off value to zero. So if it's not checked, give it a zero. And then let's give this a command of, and I'm going to call this checker. And what this does is it'll run a function called checker every time we click the button, right? So, okay, we'll create that in just a second. For now, let's go my underscore check dot pack and give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, 10 or so to push it down the screen a bit. So, all right, let's come up here and define our checker function. And for now, let's just pass. So let's save this and run it just to make sure that's working okay. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run python checkbuttons.py. And when we do, we get this little thing here. It says check me out. There's a little box. We can click it. It's blue or not. All right. And if we want to change the color, remember we know how to do that. We just come up here to our boot style and let's say we want to turn it green. That would be info. If you're not familiar with the colors, take a look at the documentation or check the previous video in this playlist where I talked about all the colors. So we can come back over here real quick, just run this guy again. And now when we click on this, it's that light blue. That's what info is. We could say danger, for instance, save this and run it right now it's red. So 
Okay, that looks good. So now let's just change this back to primary. I like primary. And if we want to play with this function, we don't necessarily have to, but if you're not familiar with how to do check buttons in Kinter, just very quickly, we can say, hey, if var one dot get, that will get whether it's a one or a zero. If it equals one, then we can say, I don't know, my underscore label dot config and set the text equal to checked, right? Else we can set this equal to unchecked, right? So if we save this and run it. Now when we click this, we would check, hey, it's checked. When we uncheck it, hey, it's unchecked, right? So a very simple example, but in this function here, you can do anything you want. So we're just changing the label. Obviously you would do something else. Whatever you wanna do, you do it in this function. So, okay, that's the check button. Very, very easy to use. But there's also something called a tool button, which is a square box. It looks like a button but you can toggle it on and off and it changes color from the color to a muted version of that color or gray if you uncheck it. So tool buttons are really easy. Again, I'm gonna go var two equals int var because we always wanna use it, an int var with these guys. And let's just call this my underscore check two and this is gonna be a tb dot check button again, right? Uh, but the boot style will now change a little bit. So first, what color do we want this? Well, let's say we want danger, which is red. So to change it from a check button to a tool button, all we have to do is type in tool button, right? Uh, these all can stay the same if we want. So I'll just kind of copy these to make this quicker. Instead of var one, it's obviously gonna be var two, but everything else will stay the same. Now we can my underscore check two dot pack and give this a pad Y of like, I don't know, 10 or something, push it down the screen a little bit. Uh, that looks good except, oh, we forgot text. So here, let's say text equals tool button. Woo -hoo. <laughs> All right. and give this a comma. Okay, let's go ahead and save this, run it. See how this looks. All right, now we got this tool button. You'll notice if we hover over it, it changes color. That's kind of cool, right? If we click it, boom, now it's just checked and uh, it stays red. Now we can click it again and move our mouse away and now it becomes unchecked again and it still changes color when we hover. Very cool, so that's the tool button. You can also do a tool button with an outline instead of this solid color, right? Super easy to do that. In fact, I'm just going to copy this whole thing and come here and say outlined tool button and just paste all this in here and let's change this to var three, my check three, set that to three. And instead of saying tool button, let's say outlined tool button. And here, same thing, we have this, we have tool button, but we also then pass in a third thing called outline. And that's all there is to it. Now we can, oh, we gotta change this to my check three. Okay, save this, head back over here, run this guy. Now we get this cool outline button. Same thing, if we hover over it, it changes color. If we click it, it becomes solid. If we unclick it, it goes back to outline and uh, very cool. Okay, next we wanna look at round toggle buttons. A little bit fancier, but uh, pretty cool. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy all of this stuff and paste it in here. And let's change this to var four, my check four. Change this to var four and come down here and change that to var four. But now let's change this boot style from danger color, let's mix it up. Let's change it to success. I think that's green. And instead of a tool button and outline, we want a round dash toggle. And here let's call this for the text round toggle. <laughs> all right. And yeah, that's all there is to that. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here, run this guy again. And now we have this cool round toggle button. If we click it, it changes to green because success is green. Very cool. And you'll notice it's not changing here because we didn't dial in the function for this, but uh, eh, very cool. Again, this is green because over here we called success. If you wanted to color it different color, you would just change the color of that. So very cool. Finally, we have the square toggle button and it is very much like the round toggle button. Let's just change this to five, call this my check five, var five, and my check five. 
And here, let's call this square toggle button. And you will never guess how to do this. We change this from round to square. Very difficult. And let's get crazy here. Let's change this to warning. I think that's yellow or orange or something like that. So yeah, that's all we have to do. That's the only difference there. Save this, run it. So now we have this cool square toggle. Boom, we click this, changes to, what is that? Orange, I guess. Very cool. So those are check boxes, tool buttons, outline tool buttons, round toggles, and square toggles with TTK Bootstrap. Very easy to do all of these things and much, much nicer looking than the regular Kinter check button that you're probably used to, but works pretty much the same as the Kinter check button. So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. I think it's awesome, has all the Kinter Widget attributes. So if you need to look something up, you can just bang, look it up right there. Everything is listed, very easy to use and very cool. Just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address, and I'll shoot you out a free copy right away. And while you're there, think about tkinter.com membership. Get all my Kinter courses at one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership. So check that out if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.